Okay. Um, you want to talk about self care or validation? Self care. Self care. I'm gonna let you kick that off because it's more important to women than it is to men, but it does absolutely apply to men. The first thing I'm gonna ask is when is the last time you did something that's in regards to your self care? Right. Got your hair done. Got your nails done. Bought yourself some new makeup. Took a bath. Got a new book. And read it. And read it. I actually sat down and read it. Yeah. If it has been longer than a week, it has been too long since you've done something for self-care. Your self-care is going to, I don't want to say regulate the energy in your relationship, but it's going to change it. Yeah, absolutely. When you prioritize your self-care, you're going to feel like you're prioritizing yourself. You're going to feel better about yourself. Right. When you feel better about yourself, you're not going to be in such a negative mindset. The small things aren't going to bother you anymore. That's facts. Yeah. I do a lot of self-care. I take baths. I read books, sit outside, listen to birds, listen to the wind. Work out. Sit in your lap. (laughs) A lot of self-care. And because of all of those things, I have a very positive outlook on my life. I do have hard days with my depression. And I feel bad. And I hate everything. And I don't want to be here anymore. Right. But generally, (laughs) I, I enjoy life. Because... It's a choice. I'm either going to enjoy the small things or I'm going to sit here and be depressed every damn day. Right. So my self-care makes it easier to feel those positive things because I don't feel like I'm grinding every day to maintain a survival. And my baths can be 30 minutes to two hours. It depends on my time management. Right. Depending on what you've got available. So 30 minutes of self-care is going to change the direction of your whole day. So with the self-care thing, I don't know why I don't sound right in my microphone. I think it's going to turn my gain down earlier. Yeah. Um, with the self-care thing, we talk about keeping reserve in your battery. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've talked about it a lot, but I'm going to just re- real quick make an example. If you look at your your emotional availability in terms of a battery, if it goes below 20%, you're going to have a hard time dealing with your emergencies or crisis you're gonna have a hard time dealing with intimacy because you don't have anything left in the tank so by the end of the day like if you're winding down at eight o'clock at night and you go to bed at 10 you want to make sure that you've got 20 percent left in the tank because that 20 percent, knowing that you're winding down for the day can then be burned and you can go to bed at zero recharge wake up at 100 percent, and start over mm-hmm. that means you have 20 percent for emotional conversations in the event that needs some needs to happen mm-hmm. um, you can have intimate conversations you can have intimate play you can have an emergency that that happens in the middle of the night and you are good enough to deal with it because you left enough in the tank. Mm -hmm. Um, What I was getting at with all of that is in the event that you are not doing the self-care, that self-care is going to affect that 20%. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't take the time to do the self-care, it doesn't matter how much you leave in the tank, you're not going to ever hit 100%. You'll sleep and charge to 75. Mm -hmm. And if you're still trying to reserve that 20%, you have a whole lot less that you can utilize throughout the day because you started the day at a deficit. If you do the self-care and you you do go to the gym, and for men, this is just as important. Your physical health is going to correlate with your mental health. Mm -hmm. If you're going to the gym and you have a bro time, I have my best friend and I work out together. That's my bro time. Mm -hmm. Um, When him and I don't train together and you and I train together, I don't get bro time. I don't have like the the pissing contest and the shit talking and like catching up on life with my best friend. Like I don't have that. Right. That is my self care time. So when I go to the gym with him and we work out together, I am recharging my batteries. I'm taking a little bit of time away from you because we are, we are inseparable. Otherwise Um, I get to to catch up on his life uninterrupted because it's just the two of us. Mm -hmm. I get to get challenged because men should be challenged. We challenge each other. We try to outlift each other, outrep each other outwork each other we try to really break each other so the next day one of us is miserable normally it's both Mm -hmm. but that is necessary for my survival and my full battery if i don't do that for a long enough time i'm not going to charge back to 100 i'm going to be working at 60 to 80 percent all the time and for a man it's the same thing if you hit zero you could probably perform if your woman initiated but i guarantee you you are not going to when you are exhausted like that you don't want to you want to Sit down on the couch, take your boots off, and just sit there in fucking silence and stare at the television and not work your brain, mm-hmm. not work your body. And for people who work outside and blue-collar workers, I promise you that you have fallen asleep sitting up on your couch at least twice a week for the last 10 years of your life, if that's what you've been doing. Mm-hmm. And you're doing that because you're not leaving enough in the tank. And, and you can leave a lot in the tank in terms of, that's not my responsibility, You can delegate things to other people. If you have people who work under you or people that are new, you can make them do grunt jobs while you 
reserve that, um, but make sure the self-care happens. Mm -hmm. Women, it it is more important for the self-care than men um, because we are used to hunter-gatherer. It is our job to provide, and that doesn't necessarily mean finances. Um, Would you agree that in general, men are just stronger than women? Yes. Okay, so we can agree on that. I believe that unless you are an elite-level athlete, Man and woman born, no exercising. The man is stronger than the woman every single time genetically. Mm -hmm. There are a very few exceptions to the rule, but as a whole, we're just going to say that men are stronger than women. In the terms of hunter-gatherer, in order for us to provide for our family, we had to leave, hunt, run, hike, throw, carry, to collect. So say we find a boar, Mm -hmm. and we're chasing this fucking thing down, and we spear it. We then have to process it in the field throw it over our shoulder or wrap it on a stick and carry it between two men back in order to survive. Mm-hmm. So we have a natural instinct to provide. So in, in before finances were a thing, that's how we provided for our family. It is our duty to protect. Mm-hmm. So in the event that something happens and a boar comes into our camp or into our, our, our tribe, the men's duty is to grab the spears and kill the fucking animal. Not the women's, not the children's, the men's. Mm-hmm. So we protect. And now that has evolved and protection looks different than what it looked like for 100,000 years. Right. Leading, same thing. Most of the elders were men. And when the hard decisions have to be made, are we going to war? Are we going to kill these fucking people? Are we going to move our camp? Men made those decisions because the hard work in those scenarios had to be done by men. Right. I mean, men were the one who were going out there and actually fighting these battles. Right. The men knew the strategies. Like, they know what's happening on the field. Right. So we protect, we provide, and we lead. Yeah. Um, I lost my train of thought again. Is it because I jumped on? No. No, it's because I'm I'm picturing myself in a fucking loincloth running through the jungle spearing shit. And I, and I know that I shouldn't because I'm never going to do that. Right, but I like the image of The it. idea of doing that is ex, it's exhilarating for me. It's yeah. thrilling to know that I'm, I'm living in my primal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Self-care. I couldn't even remember the topic we were on. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Um, so we need less self-care. Right. For us, self-care is literally laying down on a blanket in those times and eating a fucking ham hock. Give me that, give me that thigh. You know right. what I mean? And maybe getting some playtime at the end of the night before going to bed and doing the exact same thing the next day. Mm-hmm. You guys didn't have to do that. For 100,000 years, you had to take care of kids and make clothing and soap and wash clothes. It was a very different, less strenuous life for the women than it was for the men. I believe that that's why women need more self-care than men. Mm-hmm. It's why we're willing to put ourselves and our bodies and our minds through so much more than what you guys are comfortable doing because it's 100,000 years of evolution has taught us that this is our duty to do these things. Right. So I don't think that men need a lot of self, self-care. self And you can also look at other aspects. When men are hunting, they are they are not always quiet. They, you know, Obviously, when you see something, you need to, to hunt. But there's a lot of shit talking. And like, there's a lot of like, who's it's pissing contest, who's stronger and who's doing what. And you know, who's, whose sexual status is the most important in the camp. And like those conversations were very prevalent back then. Mm -hmm. Um, And, but there was also a rite of passage. You weren't a man just because you turned 18. Like you had to earn that right as a warrior and as a man. And that was in all cultures at one Mm -hmm. point or another. Um, So I don't believe that men need the same, same um, self-care routine as women. But I do think it is important that we have those things that make us feel like men yeah. If you come home and your wife is a very strong headed person, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but she emasculates you and you come home and you're like, babe, I just closed a $20,000 deal. I'm feeling like on top of the world right now. I'm pretty sure that Mr. Smith is going to give me a raise tomorrow. And you're like, you didn't do what I asked you to do last night. I'm fucking tired of you not listening to me. And you start on me instead of, instead of celebrating my victory. Yeah. I'm not going to feel like a man in that situation. You are going to make me feel like I am not worthy of being your man. Like I'm not doing my duty in that aspect because the moment I walk through the door, you degrade me. Mm-hmm. That's where that self-care really comes in because you are not living a man's life. And I believe in those scenarios, you need to go to the gym. You need to go ju- do jujitsu, go to the gun range and like learn to shoot so you can do shooting competitions. You need to do mm-hmm. something that is going to make you feel strong and like you can provide and protect and be there for your family. And that looks different for everyone. Right. But... On the women aspect, and I'm going to speak on it even though I'm not a woman, Mm -hmm. I know when you have not done those things because I can tell that you are starting to get stressed out about things that you would otherwise not look at. Yeah. 
You've never once bitched at me about the laundry basket or the towels Mm -hmm. or the garbage or anything. But I have witnessed you doing things that you would otherwise not do because you are frustrated or because you are run down and you're doing it just because it needs to get done and you don't feel like saying something. Mm -hmm. Those are times that I know you need self-care. Yeah. Because in the event that like I have watched you empty the fridge and take the garbage to the front door because you were doing it Mm -hmm. and like putting it outside on the front porch. And though I appreciate that, it makes me feel like I'm not doing my job because you're carrying a garbage bag through the house. And it's not a big deal because you're in the moment doing that. I get it. But I I actually do that because you've told me to do that. Put it by the front door? Yeah. When you're in the middle of doing that. I don't want... So if you're going to take the garbage out, leave it at the front door. Okay. That's what that conversation was. You don't need to walk all the way out there and do all that. In the event that you feel the need to do that, just leave it at the front door and I'll get it when I can. Right. Those are scenarios where I am really in the middle of something and I can't stop at the moment to take the trash out. Okay. But I've, I've noticed that when you have that frustration and you haven't been doing those things that happens more frequently because I know that if I'm sitting at the computer desk watching YouTube and you clean the fridge out, you're gonna be like, babe, can you take this out? The garbage can's full. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do it. It's not a big deal. Cause I'm not in the middle of anything, but in the event that you feel like I'm doing something and you don't want to interrupt me, you'll just do it. And though that's helpful in some scenarios, it really is. It also lets me know that you're not where you normally need to be. And if the garbage can gets over full, like if you cram shit down in there, that means I'm not doing my job. I didn't notice it when the garbage can was full and you also didn't feel the need to say anything because of whatever it is that you're going through. And I could be wrong in all of that, but that's how I, I view the situation because those are not normal things that happen with you. And I notice those inconsistencies because I'm aware of what's going on in your life. Does that make sense? That does make sense because there are also things I can pinpoint when I know that you're going through it mm-hmm. and you haven't done your self care. Yeah. So I get that. That makes sense. Me cramming down the trash can has nothing to do with like passive aggressive or I'm frustrated or anything. That's just right. I'm like, okay, I need to throw this away because I have to get back to the thing that's on the stove. So I don't, I, I don't think reaction. I don't think it's passive aggressive. Okay, that's not what I was saying. But I'm normally sitting right there, mm-hmm. and the garbage can is ten feet, right. fifteen feet. So if I'm sitting there and I'm not doing anything super important, you could just be like, hey, garbage can's full, and I'll take the trash out. Okay. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so maybe I did read that wrong, mm-hmm. but. But no, I, you're right. I, I Now that you have verbalized that, I can pinpoint moments where I'm like, damn, he's right. Because I do do things like if there's right. cardboard sitting on the counter and I'm frustrated in the, in the moment because of whatever, I will take that out to the recycling. Because I noticed it needed to be done and I needed to take it out. I wasn't thinking he's slacking on his job, blah, right. blah, blah. I was, it's, I'm cleaning the kitchen. This is in my way. I need to take care of right. it. Instead of just going, hey. Right. So you are correct. In moments where I haven't had or on days where I haven't done my self-care yet, I'm frazzled and I'm frustrated. That is me letting my emotional state bleed into the reality of the world. Right. And and, and, and it's, it's fine. Mm-hmm. But if you did that constantly and you didn't do the self-care, eventually you're going to overwork and you're going to be resentful towards me or bitter towards me. Right. Envy could even work there. Resentful mm-hmm. could work in that scenario because I'm sitting on my ass watching YouTube while you're, you're doing what you're doing. Right. So there could be resentment in that scenario. Um, but I believe it'd be more bitterness towards me. Mm-hmm. And eventually that would destroy our intimacy. Right. Because you're not taking care of yourself, which is making you get mad at the little things that you would normally just go, hey, take care of this. Mm -hmm. And I would just take care of it. But because you're frustrated, why should I have to tell him to take this out? It's his fucking job. Right. Not that you've ever done that, but that is a very normal feeling for people. So I I do believe it builds to that point. Yeah. So I'm going to rewind to the point where I just said... Because I am frustrated and I haven't had my self-care, I'm frazzled and I'm anxious. And when I'm cleaning, I see it's in my way and I don't think he's slacking on his job. I'm thinking I'm cleaning. This is in my way. I need to move it so I can wipe the counter. Right. At first. At first. That's the, that's the thought process. When you catch that in a moment and you go, oh, wait, I'm frustrated. Let me get him to come and help me. It'll ease the frustration. If you can catch it in that moment before it turns into he never does his job. I'm tired of picking up after him. Right. It's going to be a whole different situation. Right. That self-care is a massive thing when it comes to <clears throat> how you perceive what is happening in reality because you're having an emotional reaction inside of your body. Right. So this also ties into the broke things happen to broke people. Mm-hmm. If your transmission goes out on your car and you've got $20,000 saved in your bank account, it's not a big deal to go get a new transmission. 
If you have $500 in your bank account and transmission's $2,000 and you can't afford to get your transition transmission fixed, that's a problem. Mm-hmm. You're now in an emergency situation. You don't know how you're going to get to work. Broke things happen to broke people. That's a problem for people who don't have money. If your battery goes below 20%, things that would not be a problem because you have that reserve is now a fucking problem and it's an emergency and it's an issue and it would otherwise not be an issue. Yeah. If you are overly happy 90% of the time because your battery is above 20%, mm-hmm. you are never going to have that conflict. And the one time that it dips below and you start to fall apart, it's going to create a whole lot of unnecessary, I don't know what's going on yep. between both you and the way your partner feels because they're not used to you being in that scenario. And a lot of that comes down to you taking care of yourself. And it could be something as simple as just going to Starbucks and listening to an audiobook. It could be. <clears throat> they say that you should make a list of 10 things that bring you joy Mm -hmm. and you should do three of those things every single day no matter what yeah so maybe you can't take a bath so instead of taking a bath you go get a drink from starbucks or maybe you go and while you're at starbucks drinking your drink you take 20 minutes to just walk around and look at new books or Mm -hmm. new candles whatever that that's you time that you get to just enjoy your life because that's something you enjoy doing Mm -hmm. you should also Try to find 10 things that you view as a victory that make you feel like you've accomplished something and knock those out as well so that you get accomplishment and enjoyment and your life is going to be better because of it. Mm -hmm. So when we talk self-care, that's the depth that we're talking about self-care. It's not just getting a mani-pedi once a week. Right. It's three things a day Mm -hmm. that bring you actual enjoyment that you can do with or without your partner, preferably alone, Mm -hmm. so that you get to... It's un, un... filtered enjoyment right there's no bias you just get to to vibe your watercolor painting outside on days where it's nice out or if it's raining Mm -hmm. i'm not bothering you when you sit out you come over and you give me a kiss and you're like baby i'm gonna go outside and and watercolor i'm like cool i know that for the next 45 minutes my wife is outside yeah and if the kids aren't here i'm gonna i'm gonna flash you through the window (laughs) and that's gonna add to your personal enjoyment for the day it is um hang on so We, we talk about social batteries. Yeah. And I just want to delve into that just a little bit because it's relative to the battery analogy. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> when you and I are living our lives and we're going out and doing shit with people and our social battery starts to drain, we have hand signals that we can use so that we know what's going on without having to verbalize. Because in some circles, it can be rude to just, I don't want to fucking be here anymore. I need to leave. Right. There are also phrases that can be said. Um Things like that that can benefit, but in the event that your social battery is drained and you are in a public situation, you are not going to be attentive to your partner as you should be. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be as engaged in the conversation. You are going to find yourself disassociating, not paying attention, and your situational awareness is going to decrease because you were tired. You're going to be overstimulated. Your battery's going to be drained. You don't want to be there anymore. Um, It's important to recognize where your battery is. And if you and your partner both understand the battery terminology, then you can now use that. Mm -hmm. So in the event that it's six o'clock at night and you're starting to get super frustrated and you feel like your battery's ranging around 20%, you want to stop for the night. You can just tell your partner like, Hey, low battery, low battery. I'm at 20%, babe. I'm done for the night. Like, can Mm -hmm. you knock the dishes out for me? I'm I'm done. And in the event that I'm at 20% also, I'd be like, yeah, my battery's drained too. Let's watch a movie. Dishes can fucking wait. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those conversations are easy to have. A lot of that comes down to knowing how your partner communicates and just being able to to let them know effectively Mm -hmm. what's actually happening. This also ties into the expectations. If you define your expectations clearly, you will never have an issue with what's going on because you made it clear Mm -hmm. like the way that you expect things to be done. In the event that you're your partner is the one that folds the towels and you need towels to be folded a certain way because of anxiety or child trauma or whatever the fuck it is that you feel like you need the towels towels folded that way. You have that conversation to define the way the towels need to be folded for you if that's their job. It's not a big deal. You just do that up front so that it's there. Um, Those definitions apply in other aspects of your life because when you're having a conversation, if you use a term that I'm unfamiliar with, I need you to define that. It doesn't come across as a shitty scenario defining things is very normal for us because we've been doing it from the beginning. Right. So if we're having conversation and I don't understand, I need you to explain that, elaborate. I need you to define that for me. You know that I'm fully engaged in what's going on. I'm asking questions, which is engaging me further. It's engaging you further in me. And you are defining and explaining things in a way that I'm going to be able to understand them without there being conflict and and problems. Yeah. So don't be afraid to define things. We're a little over an hour on these three. I I think that I 
I'm good. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything that you want to add to that that I didn't cover or? No, I don't remember. No? No. You look tired. I am exhausted. Battery low? Yeah. You can call it a night? Yeah. All right. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye, guys. For those of you.